every time they was baptized in the Holy Ghost too, in us they spoke in other tongues or in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance to speak. And that's real profitable and that's not the way I'm going because when you pray in tongues, you are praying something that the devil don't know how to understand. Paul said no man understands what you say. But it edifies yourself. It, that word edify in the Greek means it builds you up. It builds you up. It says in 3 John 2, I believe it is, or there it says about praying in the Holy Ghost to build up on your most holy faith. Where do we get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if we're praying in tongues and that builds up on our most holy faith, that's a building up the Word of God in us. Causing our faith to be stronger in the Word, isn't it? Is that good or not? I mean, like I said, I, I'm going to lay this groundwork where we can all get a hold of it. Let's go to Acts chapter 2 now, in verse 38. Acts 2 and 38. Everybody say Holy Ghost. It ain't a bad word to say, is it? Huh? Everybody say Father. Son and Holy Ghost. That makes up our blessing. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you know, we can't get by with just the Father, can we? He's loving and all that. But we've got to have the Son, too. He died for sin so that we could go to heaven. But we can't get through this world victoriously without having the Holy Ghost, either. Amen? Acts chapter 2, in verse 38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Now let's stop there. I know there's a denomination that uses this to, you know, Everybody knows about that, I guess, and I'm not knocking that either, but let's just look at this. Let's stop right there. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. All right? When you do that part, you're born again, right? You're born again. But then what did he say? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. After you repent, when you repent and you believe on Christ and receive him as your Savior, you're saved as you're ever going to get. But then you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now let's see what this promise is. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Now who is the promise of the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit for? Huh? Everybody that's born again qualifies to be filled, but you don't get filled when you get born again. We don't need to esteem this lightly like you said up here a while ago. We need to hold up high in other words, not word for word you said it, but we need to, to hold a high banner on the Word of God. High regard we need to, to hold up the Word of God. And without the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ. Now, he didn't heal one sick person that's recorded in this book. He didn't raise the dead. He didn't turn the water into wine. He didn't do anything. When he went and was baptized by John the Baptist and the heavens opened up and Jesus saw the Holy Spirit coming down and John the Baptist said later that he seen him light upon him or seen the Holy Spirit light upon him. That's when he started doing the work. You can't do it. The Father couldn't do what he wanted to do without the Son. God can do everything, people says. God can't do everything. 
God wants a lot of you that's a lesson in here to do the word. He wants me to do a lot of things. But he can't do it without me and you cooperating with him and doing what his word says. The Father is very important. Jesus Christ, the Son, is very important. But we can't make it without the Holy Spirit being in there too because he's just as important as the other part. Because those three make up God. Is that simple? Or people says, well, I don't understand how that, and you hear a lot of people on national TV or on the channels talking about how that they don't understand how that the, there's a Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost to make up God. Well, if you've got a business and you've got uh, Ken and Brandon and Deb in it, then that would make up uh, victory. I mean, you know, God is in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, who's the Holy Ghost meant for? He's meant for everybody. He's meant for Pentecostal people. He's meant for Baptist people. He's meant for Methodists. Everybody, everywhere that's born again, Jesus Christ and God the Father, their desire is that everybody receive the Comforter. Amen? 